Hi, and welcome to the Corporate Finance Institute. This is our course on 12-month rolling cash flow forecasts. In this course, we're going to cover several things. First off, I'm going to introduce myself and the content of the course. Then we're going to talk about modeling best practices. These are tips and tricks that I've learned over years and years of building financial models. We're going to build a model together from scratch in Excel. We'll be building it from the bottom up and I'll take you through step-by-step -step calculations of how to build the forecast. Finally, we'll learn how to enhance the model. These are professional level tips and tricks that you can build into your model. Key learning objectives. Let's talk about what we're going to cover in this course. By the end of the course, you'll be able to do several things. The first is, apply a structured approach to monthly cash flow forecasting. We'll give you tips and tricks to make your model as robust as possible. Next, you're going to learn how to build the assumptions and formulas required to create the forecast for this business. We'll look out 12 months into the future to see what this company is going to look like. Next, you'll calculate the monthly cash flow that results from the assumptions and formulas above. From there, you'll analyze the impact of the forecast on the company's balance sheet and capitalization. This will allow you to make recommendations to executive management. Finally, you'll create charts and graphs to show your results that look extremely professional and help you stand out building your career. This course is ideal for anyone who's working in or wants to work in FP&A, Treasury Management, Financial Reporting, and Financial Accounting. Please open up the file called 12-Month Rolling Cash Flow Forecast in bracket blank. This is the file you downloaded at the beginning of the course. As a quick recap, the model is organized into groups. This keeps it highly structured and easy for other people to follow and makes it easy for us to build. We're going to focus on building the assumptions section right now. The assumptions section contains all the inputs or drivers for our model. It's going to help us fill in the income statement, the balance sheet, and the other sections below as we continue on. As you'll see in this model, I've inputted a set of assumptions. You can tweak these as you like, and they will drive the forecast going forward. Let's quickly review what we're going to build in the assumptions section here. For revenue, we're going to start by building on number of stores. This is a retail business that is driven by number of stores. New stores can be added each month, or stores can be closed. We have a, an assumption for sales per for, sorry, square foot per store, and then sales per square foot then we can calculate the revenue per square foot. Our operating assumptions are based on a gross margin percentage. SG&A is a fixed cost. We have a tax assumption here. We have working capital assumptions in terms of number of days it takes to get paid on receivables, the number of days for inventory to turn, and the number of days to pay our bills. We also have capital expenditure assumption with a depreciation rate of 10% and a cost per square foot to build a new store of $100 per foot. We have not assumed any equity being raised or repurchased during this period, nor any dividends paid. We do, however, have some debt that was issued a few months ago in the past, and some repayment schedules for that. We're going to graph here at the end our debt to equity ratio and debt service coverage ratio covenants. It will be important to understand if we're on side of these covenants as we build the model. So let's start at the top of the assumptions section here. This is a retail operation driven by number of stores. So what we're going to do is set the formula for number of stores going forward to be equal to last month's number of stores plus any new stores that were opened or closed in the month. Once I've built that formula, I can hold down the shift key in the right arrow to fill the area to the right and press control R. To review tips and tricks and Excel shortcuts, please take our financial modeling fundamentals course where we will review all of these in detail. Now that we have the number of stores in place per month, let's calculate on a historical basis 
what the sales per square foot was. In order to do this, we'll set the formula equal to revenue in the month divided by, and I'm going to open a bracket here, the square feet per store multiplied by the number of stores. However, this sales per square foot figure is based on actual dollars and it's annual. So we need to multiply it by a thousand because our income statement units are in thousands and multiply it by 12 because typically you think of sales per square foot on an annual basis, not a monthly basis. With that in place, I can copy and paste over here. Now I can see that historically over the past few months, the average was about $550 per square foot of annual revenue. So I'm going to be a little bit more conservative and say that we're going to do $535 per square foot of annual revenue going forward. Next up, let's look at gross margins. In order to calculate gross margins, I'm going to set this equal to the monthly gross profit divided by the monthly revenue. I can copy this and paste it to the left to get a nice average here. And as I can see, you know, the forward assumption of 26.5% again is a little bit conservative relative to historical. The SG&A dollar amounts I can also fill in by linking down to the rev to the income statement. I'm going to make sure I flip the sign. And I'm going to copy that to the left. The last thing I'm going to do here is calculate SG&A as a percentage of revenue. This will give me a sense of how it's doing if the business is growing and if it's keeping pace with a number that makes sense. Hold down the shift key on this cell, use the right arrow, and press control R. You'll see that for the forecast period, we haven't built up the revenue function yet, so you get this divided by zero error. That's fine, we'll just leave it in place for now. On a historical basis, we can see that SG&A is a percent of revenue range between about 21 and 24 percent. Now let's calculate the historical working capital assumptions. The first up is receivable days. I'm going to show the formula to calculate receivable days on a historical basis. We're going to set it equal to the accounts receivable on the balance sheet divided by the annualized revenue, so the revenue in that month times 12, times 365 days per year. If you want a refresher on this formula, please refer back to the previous chapter where we broke it down in detail. Next up is inventory. I'm going to calculate inventory days in a similar way where I take the inventory on the balance sheet and I divide it by, this time it's the annual cost of goods sold. So I'm going to flip the sign for cost of goods sold and multiply it by 12 and then multiply all of this by 365 days per year. 28.8 days. Lastly, let's do accounts payable together. I'm going to set it equal to, on the balance sheet, accounts payable divided by the cost of goods sold with a fly, sign flip times 12 to make it annual and then times 365 days per year. So with these in place, I can copy these using control C select the area to the left and press control V to paste them. So I now see that based on these historical days for receiving payment, turning inventory and paying bills, I have realistic assumptions going forward about what this business is going to do. Feel free to tweak any of these blue cells as you build your own model. Financing assumptions I have left as zeros. You could put in here that this business will raise money or buy back shares or even pay dividends. There is some debt that was issued in September 2015. That debt has some principal repayments that go with it and a 5.75% coupon. I also have filled out here that we have a debt to equity ratio covenant of 0.7 times 
and a debt service coverage ratio of three times. These formulas here are simply linking to the one reference cell. I'm going to delete these. Using Control, Shift, and the right arrow, I can select all those cells. As a reminder, we only want any one input located in one spot in the model. So for reference, I set this equal to the cell to the left. I select it in the cell below and press Control D to fill down. I hold Shift and the right arrow and select the cells to the right and press Control R to fill that right. We've now filled in the entire assumption section of this model. This will allow us to forecast the income statement, the balance sheet, we'll build some supporting schedules, and then the cash flow statement. Let's get ready to move on to the next section. Now that we have the assumptions in place, we can start filling in the income statement. Let's open up the assumptions section here. So we've got everything ready for easy reference. Let's also open up the income statement section. To fill in the income statement, I'm going to start with revenue. I'm going to set a formula that's equal to, and I'm going to scroll up to the top of the assumptions section, the sales per square foot multiplied by the square feet per store and multiplied by the number of stores divided by 12, because as you'll recall, the sales per square foot number is an annual figure, and divided by a thousand because our income statement is expressed in thousands, as are all of our financial metrics, other than these assumptions here on sales per square foot. So I get that number there. I can then calculate the cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold is going to be equal to the revenue in the month times 1 minus the gross margin. And I'm going to make sure I set this to negative. I can then calculate the gross profit using all equal sign, which is the quick auto sum function. Next I can pull forward SG&A from the assumptions section. It's going to be equal to, and I'm putting a negative sign to flip it here, the monthly SG&A in thousands. From there I can calculate EBITDA. EBITDA is going to be equal to the sum of gross profit and the SG&A expenses. Now that we've filled the income statement all the way down as far as we can, let's select this column, holding Control, Shift, and Down arrow. I then hold just the Shift key and the right arrow, select the space to the right, and press Control R. I've now filled in the first half of the income statement. Hi, and welcome to the Corporate Finance Institute. Now it's time to build some charts and graphs to make a beautiful output of this model. It's best practice to have a summary or dashboard section of the model that includes charts and graphs and key metrics. The goal is to convey a lot of information as quickly as possible. The readers of our final output may not have time to go through the model in detail, so we need to show them what really matters. We're going to prevent several different types of information on the screen, so we're going to combine different chart types. And we're going to replace any tables where charts are easier to display the information. So particularly for sensitivity analysis, you want to be sure to use a lot of tables. For more on sensitivity analysis, you can check out our course on sensitivity analysis. Now let's jump into the model and get going. Flipping back to the Excel file, we're going to focus on the summary charts and graphs section here. What we're going to have to do is pull forward information from the model that we want to chart into a little table here. This makes it much easier to link up the charts and it keeps the model very organized. So let's open up all of the model by hitting number two here on the grouping. This way we can easily link up. First thing we need to do, because we're going to graph debt to equity ratios, is take these formulas that were in the historical period, select them, and then press Control R to fill those right. These are our debt to equity ratios and debt service ratios. 
I'm going to start by building an operating cash flow summary. So I'm going to link up into the cash flow from operations. And we're going to be starting in the period of Oct ending October here as we don't have complete data for September. So we're going to link up here to the cash from operating activities. Then we're going to link up the investing cash flow. And finally, the financing cash flow. And as one last piece, let's link the monthly cash balance. There's two places to pull that from. One is on the cash flow statement and the other is on the balance sheet. On the next section here, let's pull forward the debt service ratio. and the debt service covenant. This is the benchmark that we want to compare to. So what I'm going to do is select this information here, select the area to the right, and then press Control R. So I've now filled in the tables that are going to populate the charts. And if I look down here, I've got a monthly cash flow chart that shows the operating cash flow in blue, the investing cash flow in green, and the financing cash flow in purple. Then we have our running monthly cash balance in the red line. And as you can see, this really highlights what we can't see as easily in the numbers of the model, which is that our cash, our cash balance gets very low to zero at a couple points here. And these coincide with the years that we have big investing cash flow. Those represent the new store openings and capital expenditures for new openings. So this chart really demonstrates the impact of opening new stores on this business. Now let's scroll down and look at the next chart. The next chart is on our debt service ratio and the debt service ratio covenant. As you can see, we graph the covenant with a dotted red line and it remains flat as this does not change over time. And then we have the observed debt service ratio or the forecasted debt service ratio. And as you can see, we're actually forecasting to dip below the covenant at one point here. So this is something we're going to want to watch very carefully as we move forward with planning for this business and ultimately rolling up our recommendations to the CFO and the CEO when we present our results. Let's review what we've built in this course. We've designed a very robust and dynamic financial model that forecasts 12 months of cash flow. We've got some historicals here, and then we've got our forecast period on the right. The model is grouped by section. We start with our assumptions. This is where we keep only inputs and drivers of the business. This business is driven by number of stores and new store openings, as well as sales per square foot. Below that, we've got our income statement. The income statement flows from the assumptions, as well as some supporting schedules below. In the supporting schedules, we've modeled our capital assets like property, plant, and equipment, as well as our debt schedule. We can take pieces of these and feed them up into the balance sheet. The balance sheet also pulls from the income statement and assumptions section. When the income statement and balance sheet are complete, we can then do the cash flow statement. With the cash flow statement, we've built the three components, cash from operating activities, investing, and financing. Finally, with all of that in place, we're able to create summary charts and output graphs. This is probably the most important part of the model, where we're able to clearly display what's happening in this business over time and how we need to adjust things going forward given the forecast. Thanks for taking this course with the Corporate Finance Institute. We hope we've helped you accelerate your career.